I'm going full villain mode. I don't care. Um, this is why I don't watch Kenny Wallace videos, because his takes are shit. And again, what do I have to say compared to a racing legend in comparison to me? Also, on a preference, even the worst drivers knock the socks out of common day people. There's this basketball show where they, it's like one of the worst basketball players in, like, in the professional league compete against common people and he smokes the floor with them so like they're obviously yes so obviously there's that too but let's just get into it there's stuff to say about this it's a quick video but i want to get my thoughts out and this is kind of the part where he starts talking here here's what i say the driving by austin dillon matches that team let's let's go back anytime the late great dale senior did something like that and we watched Dale Earnhardt never did anything like that where he was like five car lengths back plowing through not one person but then turning left and hooking two. Dale never did that. He would he would bump. He would bump and run. Uh, he got into Daryl uh, in the 86 Richmond race and that was shitty. Uh, Bristol 99 that was terrible too. Um, but by point stands, Dale did not dive bomb a corner five car lengths back plow through two people. So uh, this argument in comparison just doesn't work. We watched Senior do it. No, he didn't do this. Not, not this specifically. We watched Dale Senior do it. You saw Chocolate Myers and that old, the Flying Aces. They were there. I think any team is going to support their driver really no matter what. I don't think this is like anything new or like revolutionary. It's just the team is going to support the driver uh, through thick, uh, thick and thin. So this is nothing unique to Dale Earnhardt. Is this is just normal to back up Dale Senior. So what I see right there, I'm old enough that I see shades of the past. No, uh, Austin Dillon uh, is not comparable to Earnhardt in any capacity. Uh, even what Austin Dillon did in that race, I mean, he drove really well. But then he decided to dive on the corner, which again, Earnhardt didn't have to do all the time. Uh, looking at all of, of his every wins, uh, very few wins were him bumping and running someone out of the way. It was really a handful. But the other 69 wins or so were on actual race pace speed. Because this was in an era where there wasn't multiple green-white checkers determining a finish. So, um... Yeah, uh, this just this comparison's just weird. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so what we what we know is that what Austin Dillon was wrong. It was wrong. I'm gonna admit it was wrong. I, wait, just wait. But if Dale Senior did that, like we watched Dale Senior do that to Terry Labonte at Bristol, the Flying Aces were there to back him up. And that's what you saw. You saw that team. What is this argument about? Oh, that his team backed him up. What does that have to do with anything? He even admitted that this what what Dylan did was wrong. What's this point of? Oh, the crews are backing him up for it. It's, it's irrelevant. Why can't he just talk about the take of it was wrong, but he did what he had to do because of the format and everything? Why? What? What does the pit crew have to do with this? It's irrelevant. We have not seen a finish like that in ages, okay? So what I'm going to say is what I've already said. I said what I said, all right? You said very little. I, you mainly compared Earnhardt's crew to Dylan's and how they back him up, and Earnhardt would do the same exact thing, which he hasn't. Those are really the only points. So we can debate it all the way to next week. Austin Dillon did what Dale Sr. would have done. Again, this comparison... Doesn't make any sense. Earnhardt never went full throttle. I Again, I'm just repeating the same points because Kenny's repeating the same points. So there's nothing of substance being added. It's just I'm, we're just repeating stuff. And again, I'm guilty of it too, but there's nothing much to say. I'm just going to be repeating myself. And the flying aces are gone, but this team is, is backing them up. They were the first ones out there on the front straightaway. I don't care. I don't care if the team is backing them up. Most teams will do that. It's nothing new. So, Joey Logano's also right. What other series lets somebody dump two people and still get away with it? Uh, hell, if you bump somebody in Formula One, you're out of the race. If you do that... I know Kenny doesn't understand the other series, and I'm not that much knowledgeable either, but 
NASCARs are stock cars. Formula One, IndyCar, they're open wheel. It's, in theory, dangerous to bump and run someone in those cars. They're fundamentally different. So the series has to officiate them on a much different scale. That's it. This is coming from a dumbass. It shouldn't be that hard. In an IndyCar yacht race. However, there's a lot of things I saw in this race. You saw... You saw... Uh, what is that? The owner of Bass Pro Shops. The owner of Bass Pro Shops was there because of Truex retiring. And Truex has a long history with Bass Pro Shops because he's literally been with that sponsor since his Bush Series days in 2004. So that's why he was there. He's not there to watch Austin Dillon. I'm, not, I'm sure that's not the, the thing he's trying to spin, but that's why that guy was there. They said it on the TV too. So, yeah. He was there. So, I mean, Austin had a lot going for him. He had to win that race or else he was not going to be in the playoffs. So, you know, listen, I look at this. I look right now. If we took a poll and there'd be half of you say, do what you got to do. The other half are going to go, I can't believe you did that. But hold on now. Let's bust this down. I just had a Kenny conversation with Denny Hamlin, and we talked about this. Den Denny says, listen, I squeezed the five car, you know, off of turn two at Pocono. He said he squeezed Kyle Larson there a year ago. Gave him a little room, but still they beat and bang. All right. Uh There's different layers to this. What Hamlin did there isn't really great. I think it's kind of shitty racing etiquette. You kind of put the driver in a position where it's either they back off or keep it in the throttle and wreck both of them. I think it's a stupid tactic. It's, again, not comparable to what Austin Dillon did where he just full throttled into turn three and took out Logano and then turned left and then swiped Hamlin. It's much different. It's much different. I don't know how much more I can I can articulate these, these points, but they're very different. Uh, There's different tiers of wrecking someone. What Austin Sindrick Austin Sindrick. Austin, I think you have a better driver. Uh, Austin Dillon did is way worse than anything Earnhardt did than any driver I've seen. I mean, that's like short track level trash. So, no. There's different layers. There's different elements to it. If there was like a five tier layer of like, from like, like a bump and run to a knock and run, uh, squeezing up in the wall, and then just plowing through them. Not only did Austin Dillon plow through someone, but then he wrecked someone else after the fact. He did. He did a double double tandem of that. So yeah, it's, I don't know. Joey Logano and Matt Kenseth. Listen, Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano are not no choir boys either. Okay. Again, what they what they've done are stupid. And I don't like. But they didn't do anything as egregious as this. Is that fair? I, I haven't seen... I mean, even with Denny Hamlin running through Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin wasn't five car lengths back, full throttling in the corner, plowing through Chase Elliott. When Logano was maybe two car lengths behind William Byron. Th that was still egregious at, Dar at Darlington. Like, that's still... I'm not a fan of that. Boston Dillon, like, I... He's, Five, five car lengths back. That's so much worse than any of these those drivers have ever done. They, D Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano got blood in their hands too of, of stupid stuff they've done, or at least you know bump and run tactics. They're they're not innocent either, but they are much more less innocent, or they're they're more, they're more innocent innocent than what Austin Dillon did. Is that that's all I'm trying to say? You know, I, I've seen this happen with Rusty. Okay, so Rusty, 100 years ago, goes down into turn three and gets into Daryl Walt. Okay, so we're going to reference 1989. Okay, 1989, I could bring it up. Fuck it, we'll bring it up. So for context purposes, this is what Kenny's referencing. Do you see how light of a tap that was? How far back was he? It's very gradual, very gradual. Gets up to him. Little boop. These Gen 7 cars are much different. You have to you have to plow into them. That's much different. 
I mean, we'll just do another comparison. And there's literally like a meme video of it up already. How far back is that? That That's it's pretty blatant. I mean, with these Gen 7 cars and the context with these cars is... It's really hard to bump and run people because the cars are kind of built like tanks. So for that to, for him to spin, a shit ton of contact had to be made. Versus this incident here where it's very light contact. Boop. It's very light. It's very different. So, again, we're trying to compare apples and oranges to an incident. It's not the same. I can't really recall an incident where someone's that far back and just plows through them like that. Like that specifically. For, for, the, for the Winston, and, and then all of a sudden, Daryl's the good guy. But no one's a good guy in the situation. What Austin Dillon did doesn't make Hamlin any less shitty because of the stuff they done. It doesn't change anything, though. Daryl's the good guy, right? And Rusty becomes the bad guy. So you're telling me right now that if you don't like this, you're telling me that. You're telling me Joey Logano and of all people, Denny Hamlin, you're going to make them be the good, good guys now? They're not good guys, though. They're definitely less innocent in comparison, but they're still guilty of stupid shit. So, Kenny, you're trying to, like, trump me, and it's not working. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, it's just not going to happen. Look at that face. He thinks he's trying to, no, it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. I, I ain't going for it. I ain't going for it. Here's what I say. I see we had a tire option that was 100% win. I saw a drop. Kenny, you can you can list off every good thing in this race. But if that if the outcome, the finale of the race is going to result in that, then all the goodwill of the race is ruined. Yes, in theory, the tires could be good for the future to use because I thought the compounds were, were pretty good. But that's not going to make this race a 10 out of 10. The ending is so important. I, I, if the ending is stupid, it's going to make everything else look pathetic in comparison because what are people going to take from this race? What are people going to remember from this race? They're not going to remember the racing prior to that. So, yeah, I don't know. All right. In ending, desperate people do desperate things. Here, here, here's my here's my ending. Austin Dillon did what he had to do to get in the playoffs. But this kind of paints the picture of how broken NASCAR is, though. Because that's what it took. It took basically die bombing a corner and taking out someone, and then taking out another car. That's that's where we're at. There was a Watkins Glen race in 2003 where um, Jeff Gordon was racing Robbie Gordon. Hard, but fair. Jeff Gordon could have easily just wrecked him. But he didn't. Because that was in an era where full season points mattered. And risking it all just wasn't worth it. Because it could end up wrecking himself and losing a whole bunch of points. Now it doesn't really matter. Now it don't matter. Because with stage points and everything else, you can kind of... You know, do really good the first two stages, finish 20th, but then you'll kind of get points that will kind of equate you to, like, 10th. So, it, don't, it doesn't really hurt as much. A completely different era, but, yeah, gone are those days. Gone are those days. Um, all I could say is, I hope you enjoy this because it's going to happen more. It's just, it's just going to keep happening. Are they going to find him? Hell, I don't know. Are they going to find him? If they can't find him or else they... If they find him, then NASCAR is guilty of saying he did something wrong. But that, that kind of goes back to old Robert Pemberton. Boys have at it, right? This was a rule perpetuated in the 2009 season where they decided to finally police people, but then they got rid of it, and they said boys have at it, and that's where we get fucking Atlanta 2010 with Edwards losing his damn mind and all that shit. And it was an issue back then. But with this format, it's going to enable more people to do crazy, desperate shit. And we saw that. This won't be the first nor the last, either. So, uh, boys have at it. I wish should have a, just a, a limit. I feel like some extent should have a limit. 
If someone's going to dive bomb in the corner, take someone out, and then left hook someone in the wall, which Hamlin's apparently hurt from it. His shoulder hurts from it. So, um, yeah. And then you have, uh, you know, his... I, I, fuck, I'll find, a, I'll find the clip. That is some dude bro mentality. Rack him, rack him, rack him. No, no, no respect for competition. Completely disregarding any type of respect for competitors. Remember in Rusty Wallace's retirement, your own bro, Kenny? Rusty was talking about how drivers need to respect each other and, and, and take care of the sport. You addressed all the drivers today in the driver's meeting. Do you feel like you've taught the sport a little yourself? I'm real proud of where the sports came, and I don't want anybody to screw it up. Uh, we work real, real hard to build the fan base and make this a real popular sport. And so I just want all those drivers, the young and old, to make sure that they know that this is a privilege driving these cars. And respect these fans and respect these sponsors and respect everybody. And that's what I've tried to do. And, hey, they're all good ones. They'll be fine. You've heard? Yeah, uh, that is not happening. And seeing that is sad because that is not the case at all. That is not the case at all, Mr. Kenny. Um, it's just, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. You could say, oh, Earnhardt did that. You know what? Earnhardt did do some of that. I don't agree with it either. But you know what? Earnhardt at least got a shit ton of wins too without doing that. Because he was talented enough to do it. Austin Dillon has had a history of backing himself into wins. Whether it be fuel mileage, 2017. 2018, Daytona 500 just blowing through Almirola. Uh, 2020, Texas. He stays, stays out. And because of the package and dirty air being so horrible in that car, which is a pretty objective fact, we saw Kansas being one of the most egregious examples of it. That's the package. So he kind of wins because of strategy. 2022, uh, the field explodes, and he has to bump and run Austin Cindric to win, which is also really sad to do. But he also was just fortunate and lucky enough to get through the wreck. And then this one, where he actually ran a good race the entire race until the end, where he just does that. He literally had the best race of his career and then the worst race of his career, all in the span of one night. So, yeah, there's that too. And boy, they had at it. And I will also say this: I would go ahead and put it put it on YouTube. Kenny Wallace getting into David Green. Same damn thing happened to me at that exact track. I led the whole race in that Red Dog car. I led the whole damn race, right? And I come out of the pits in third, and I panic. I'm like, "There's no way." I'm gonna lose this race after leading the whole damn thing. So I get by second place and I go down the back straightaway and I pop David Green in the ass. But I just wiggled him. I just wiggled him and I went on to win the race. But see, Kane, that's the difference. You literally explained the difference. You wiggled him out the way. You didn't plow through someone, dive on the corner. I should just fuck look this up. I don't know where I can find this. I don't know. I, I, I gotta look it up. I'm assuming it must be an Xfinity race in the 90s somewhere. I don't know what race Kenny's referring to. It might be this one. He definitely didn't lead the whole race. Uh, David Green was leading at some point. But just from uh, Kenny describing it, that's not comparable. That is a, from the sounds of it, a quintessential bump and run. It's not my favorite thing. But that's definitely not egregious as plowing through someone five car lengths deep and then wrecking a second car. Did Kenny just not, was not aware of this? Did he just, all he hear, hear about is just, he won in a bump and run. Like, is Kenny missing some context? Because there is some massive context missing here. Like, that, what he's describing, what Austin Dillon, sent Dillon did, were two different things. My thought is that Austin Dillon's not doing like, you all are at home, drinking beer, you're, you're all happy, you're, and you're like, oh, I don't know. Listen, when you got that helmet on, and your team is down and out like RCR is, and you're like, there's no way I can lose this race. I, I had it won. I had a straightaway lead. How can I lose this race? You got the owner of Bass Pro Shop. You got Paul, Pat Paul, whatever they call Richard Jones. They win the race off pit road. Joey holds back. That, that's key right here. Joey holds back. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts here. On the start, you see Joey holds back, gets that run. Joey did a good job. 
all fair in love and war, right? And so Joey Logano screws him right there. Joey Logano screwed him because he raced him? That doesn't make any sense. Joey Logano screws us. I guess in theory, yes, any driver that's in second place on a restart, then passes first, screwed him up. Sure. They go down the corner, and, and maybe Austin could have got him right there, but maybe Austin thought maybe I'll, I'll race him to the checker. And um, considering also, this is also really funny too, considering the fact Austin Dillon in the press conference was literally saying all he saw was red. So, in a sense, I guess there is some motivation for all the stuff of why he did it. Does that make it right? No. But this is the format. This is the format. It's going to enable actions like that. And it's not cool. It's just stupid. That's not what I got into racing 25 years ago. Which, ironically, the first year I was actually watching it was the Labonte thing of Bristol. Which, even then, as a 4-year-old, as a 24-year-old, as a 34-year-old, as a 44-year-old, I will never see that in, in any context where I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Because it was stupid. It was bullshit back then. It was bullshit now. Also, for context purposes, it was a late race restart. Terry got four. Earnhardt got two. And Terry was going to drive by him on the fresh tires. Earnhardt knew that. And he did what he had to do. Except even back then, it made even less sense to do it because he wasn't doing it for any type of playoff spot. It was just for a win. So you can even argue that was less logical compared to now where there actually is reason. But the reason is so stupid. But whatever. Pops him in the ass and ends up spinning him out. Looks left. He goes, oh, there's Denny Hamlin. I'll wreck him too. <laughs> I'm glad he finds that funny too. Like that's just wholesome, like just ha-ha. Ha-ha, the sport I was in that has made me a career, made me millions and everything. Yeah, I'll just laugh at it. I mean, that's the type of shit like maybe 15-year-old me would do. But none of that's funny though. It's just sad. It's just sad. This is why I don't watch the Kenny Wallace videos, because his tastes are such dog shit, and his perspective on everything is so just not what I see. And it's just annoying, because it, it feels like everything he says is just, why bring in the freaking pit crews? What, does, what do the pit crews have to do about any of this? Oh, they stood behind his driver. Wow, what a concept. I never thought about that. Th wow. So yeah, th that was the video. I don't know what more to, to really say about it. Kenny just kind of brings up random points of comparing Rusty Wallace and the Daryl thing, but th they're just not different. They're just not different. They're just so not the same. Uh, what, what else do I say? This is why I don't watch th these videos from Kenny. It's either like just horrific takes, random points, or him being like lounging around making a point. Like just... It's just... And also, he tweets so much. I used to follow him on Twitter. He tweets so often. It's obnoxious. I can't stand it. Like, I'm not even really like a person that, that's like picky on people tweeting, but like, he does it all the time. And it's so unhealthy. It's so fucking unhealthy. But whatever. He's a genius here. He's the race craft, craftian. Better than most people will ever be, so take his word as the gospel. I don't know. I... That's my thoughts on it, and it's fun to dunk on them, so there.